Welcome to lecture number 36 on measure and integration. In today's lecture, we will be looking at uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus for Lebesgue integrals. Uh, if you recall, we had started uh, our lectures um, with a motivation saying that uh, for Riemann integrable functions, uh, the importance of fundamental theorem of calculus uh, is there and that is why uh, it is uh, uh, easier to integrate uh, functions whose derivatives are known. However, uh, after Riemann in, uh, extended this notion of uh, integral beyond continuous functions, uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus no longer remains true if uh, the integrand in the uh, Riemann integral is not continuous. So, that made uh, uh, though, the, uh, though the class of uh, functions which were integrable was in extended. Uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus no longer was true. So, efforts were made uh, to extend the notion of integration and that is how we got the notion of integral uh, Lebesgue integral and today we will uh, show how fundamental theorem of calculus holds uh, for Lebesgue integrable functions. So, today's uh, topic is going to be fundamental theorem of calculus for Lebesgue integral. Let us just recall fundamental theorem of calculus for uh, Riemann integrable functions. It says, if you are given a pair of functions small f and capital F defined on a interval a b, then they satisfy the relation that f of t minus f of s is equal to the integral s to t of f x d x for every pair of points s less than t in a b, if and only if the function f is continuous and the function capital F is the, the derivative of capital F is small f. So, uh, this equation that f of t minus f of s is equal to integral from s to t of little f of x d x holds if and only if the function little f is continuous, the function capital F is differentiable and the derivative is equal to small f. So, the in a sense this relates uh, differentiation with integration. So, it essentially says that uh, for every continuous function, it is uh, indefinite integral is differentiable and if you integrate the uh, derivative, you will get back the function. So, we would like to uh, analyze this theorem for uh, Lebesgue integrable functions. So, we are going to look at a function f which is uh, uh, which is integrable on the interval a b. So, let us fix a, a function f which is integrable on a to b and look at the indefinite integral namely capital F of x is equal to integral uh, on the interval a to x of f t d lambda t the integration being with respect to uh, the Lebesgue measure uh, lambda. So, what we want to do is this function a capital F is called the indefinite integral of the function small f. So, we would like to analyze the properties of this function capital F in detail. Uh, so, the to analyze these properties, uh, we have to uh, look at uh, some classes of functions. Uh, we will make the definition first and then come to back to this function capital F. So, let, uh, let us take a function uh, f which is defined on a interval a b taking real values and let us take a partition p of the interval a b partition being starting with a equal to x 0 and the point x 1, x 2, x n uh, equal to b. So, the p is a partition with points and points a and b and in between points are uh, x 1, x 2 and x n. So, let us take a partition of this interval a b and define what is called the variation of the function f over this partition in the interval a to b. So, this is denoted by capital V lower a upper b indicating that we are over the interval a to b with respect to a partition p of the interval a b of the function f. So, what is this uh, quantity? So, you look at uh, the variation of f on each sub interval of the partition. So, look at f of x k minus f of x k minus 1 absolute value of this. So, this is how the function varies. Uh, on the interval x k minus 1 to x k. So, look at this number 
absolute value of f of x k minus f of x k minus 1 and look at the summation of all these variations uh, 1 to n. So, this, uh, this is how the value of the function changes at the end points of the partition. So, this number is called the variation of f over the interval a b with respect to the partition p. It depends on the partition, the points and on the interval of course, a to b. And then we define, look at the supremum of the all these variations of the function f over the interval a b with respect to various partitions of the interval a b. So, this supremum is called the total variation of f over the interval a b and we denote it by v a b of f. So, v a b of f is nothing but the supremum of the part, uh, variations with respect to various partitions v a b of um, f with respect to p. Now, obviously, this number is a non negative number, it could be equal to plus infinity because it is the supremum of non negative numbers. So, we say that the function has bounded variation if this number v a b f, which is the supremum of the variations of with respect to various partitions, is a finite quantity. So, we say a function f defined on an interval a b is of bounded variation if the supremum of the variations of the function f with respect to all the partitions, the supremum of this is a finite quantity. So, we will uh, look at uh, some examples of uh, functions of bounded variation. Uh, obviously, every uh, monotonically increasing uh, or decreasing function is a function of bounded variation. So, let us just uh, check that. So, let us take a function with f defined on interval a b taking values in r and let us say f is monotonically increasing. So, let us take a partition p of a b. So, let us a equal to x 0, x 1, x n equal to b. So, this is a partition of uh, the interval a b. So, we want to look at what is f of x i minus f of x i minus 1, x i minus 1 absolute value of this. But this quantity because f is monotone, so this is same as f of x i minus f of x i minus 1 because it is monotone. So, this value is bigger than this. So, absolute value is same. So, if we take summation on both sides 1 to n. So, summation i equal to 1 to n. So, that will give us all consecutive terms will cancel. So, that will be f of x n minus f of x 0, which is equal to f b minus f of a. So, that means that this uh, uh, variation of uh, the function with respect to any partition is uh, equal to f b minus f of a. So, that implies, so this implies that f is of bounded variation, because the supremum also will be equal to uh, this. So, this is uh, every monotonically increasing function is of bounded variation. Let us uh, check that if f and g are two functions on a b defined on the interval a b, then the function f is of bounded variation, then f it is a itself is a bounded function. So, let us check that also that every function of bounded variation is a bounded function. So, f on a b to r, we are given that the variation of f from a to b is finite. So, let us take, so this is interval a, this is b. So, here is a, let us take any point x. So, look at f of x. So, this f of x, um, absolute value of this is less than or equal to f of x minus f of a plus f of a by triangle inequality. And now, if I uh, look at the partition of the interval a b by three points a, x and a, then what will be the uh, variation with respect to that partition? 
that will be f of b minus f of x absolute value plus uh, the absolute value of f of x minus f of a. So, this first term will be less than or equal to variation of the function with respect to that particular partition plus mod f of a, where what is the partition p? So, p is the partition of three points a, x and a. So, this will be one of the terms in that variation. So, it will be less than or equal to this and that is less than or equal to the variation over a b of f. So, plus mod f of a. So, if f is a function of bounded variation, then mod f of x is less than or equal to the total variation plus this quantity, which is a finite quantity. So, let us call it as some number m. So, is less than or equal to. So, the, we can call this number as m. So, which, so this implies f is bounded. So, implies f bounded. So, every function of bounded variation is also a bounded function. Next, let us look at uh, the class of functions of bounded variation and we want to check if f and g are of bounded variation, then so are the functions f plus g, f minus g, f into g and alpha f for every alpha belonging to R. That means, the class of functions of bounded variation is a nicely behaved class and uh, these properties are all easy to check. Uh, let us uh, just check uh, say one of the properties say f g. So, let us uh, let me check only one of them say f and g on a b to r such that the variation of f is finite and g also has bounded variation. So, let us take any partition p of a to b say x 1, x 2, x n minus 1 and x n and let us analyze f g of x i minus f g of x i minus 1. So, we want to uh, look at this quantity and we are given f and g are uh, functions of uh, bounded variation. So, since uh, f is a bounded variation, so that is also is a bounded function. So, we can say this is less than or equal to. So, let us assume that uh, mod f x is less than or equal to m for every x. So, let us assume this quantity uh, because f is a bounded variation. So, it is bounded. So, we can write this quantity as f of x i mod of x i uh, less than or equal to or there is no need to write that. Let us just uh, because f g into f x i is f of x i and uh, g of x i and f of x i is less than or equal to m. So, I can write this is less than or equal to m times g of x i minus g of x i minus 1. So, that will be uh, less than or equal to m times. So, when we take the summation on both sides summation i equal to 1 to n. So, this will be less than or equal to summation i equal to 1 to n. So, that will mean that the variation of a to b with respect to p of f g is less than or equal to m times the variation of uh, the function g uh, over this. So, this happens for every. So, implies that f g is of bounded variation. So, basically these are all uh, easy uh, properties to check that if f and g are of bounded variation, then f plus g is of bounded variation and uh, um, f minus g the product alpha times f all are functions of bounded variation. So, here are some facts uh, about the functions of bounded variation which are of uh, importance. So, uh, we will prove one by one. So, let us take a function f of bounded variation. Then for any two points x and y in a b with x less than or equal to y, let us denote the variation of f over the interval x to y if x is less than y 
and if it is equal then we denote it by equal to 0. So, v x y v lower x upper y denotes the variation of the function f in the interval closed interval x y if x is strictly less than y if x is equal to y obviously, we write it at equal to 0. Then it has the following properties. The first property is that the variation of the function over an interval is additive. That means, if we take the variation of uh, the in, uh, function over the interval a to b, then it is same as the variation over a to c plus the variation over c to b. So, let us prove this property. So, here is the interval a to b and here is the point c. So, we want to check that the variation over a to b of f is equal to variation over a to c of f plus variation c to b of f. So, to check that let us start let let us take a partition p of a b. So, take a partition p of a b. Okay. Then this gives us so, let us uh, look at uh, the variation of a to b over p of, um, uh, of f. So, that will be equal to uh, summation. So, let us say the partition points are x i minus f of x i minus 1 i equal to 1 to n absolute value of this. Now, this partition may or may not have the point uh, c inside it. So, in any case let us insert the point c inside this even if it is not there that means, let us say it, uh, it lies it in x i minus 1 and x i. So, introduce the point uh, in the partition new partition. So, then in that case p can be written as p 1 union p 2 where p 1 is a partition of a to c and p 2 is a partition of c to b. So, we look at the partition and divide it into two parts the partition p 1 in the, the points lying in a to c and we add the point c here and p 2 is here. And then this if we introduce that point c in between. So, that will tell us that this quantity is less than or equal to. So, this is less than or equal to sigma i equal to uh, 1 to that point. So, 1 to that point let us call this point as uh, uh, c as something. So, that is so or essentially it is same as the variation over a to b of p 1 a to c of p 1 of f plus the variation c to b of p 2 f f less than or equal to. Because when you introduce the point c here, so f of x i uh, minus f of uh, c plus f of x i minus 1 plus. So, this sum the ith uh, absolute value sum will split into two parts which less than or equal to one term will be accommodated here the other will be accommodated here. So, as a consequence of this we uh, get that. So, because of this we will have that v a b of partition with respect to the partition p is less than or equal to this is p 1 and p 2 are particular partitions. So, is less than or equal to c of f plus v c b of f. So, we get that the variation with respect to any partition p over the interval a b is less than or equal to the variation total variation over a to c plus the total variation over c to b. And this happens for every partition. So, that implies that the supremum which is nothing but the variation of uh, f over a b is also less than or equal to variation over c of f plus variation c to b of f because this happens for every partition. So, we can take the supremum and that is also. So, we get one way inequality namely the variation of f over a to b is less than or equal to the variation a to c plus variation c to b. Uh, to prove the other way around inequality let us fix epsilon greater than 0 and select partitions say p 1 of a to c and p 2 of c to b such that 
what happens? So, V A C of f is the supremum. So, minus a small number epsilon by 2 cannot be the supremum. So, there must exist a partition P 1 of A to C, such that this quantity is less than the variation A to C of P 1, P 1 of f. And similarly, for the second one, so why we are just using the fact that V A C or V C B of f is the supremum. So, similarly, we will get a partition P 2 of C to B such that this is less than or equal to the variation of uh, the function with respect to the partition uh, P 2. So, uh, that will give us, so adding these two equations we will get, so if you add these uh, two equations we will get V A C of f plus, so adding these two equations will give us this plus V C B of f minus epsilon is less than or equal to V A C P 1 f plus V C B P 2 of f. And now, we realize that the partition P 1 and P 2 put together, these two quantities are nothing but variation of A to B of P 1 union P 2 of f. So, we have a partition P 1 on A to C, we have a partition P 2 on C to B. So, these two variations put together give us the variation with respect to the partition over the whole interval which is the union of the two A B and that is less than or equal to V A B of F because it is a supremum. So, we get for every epsilon the V A C, um, the variation over A to C plus the variation over C to B minus epsilon is less than this. So, epsilon is arbitrary. So, that implies V A C of f plus V C variation over C to B is less than or equal to variation A to B of f. So, that proves that the variation behaves nicely namely it is. So, this proves the first property namely that the variation is additive over the interval which we are doing. So, variation over A to C plus variation C to B is equal to the variation over A to B of f. So, the next property we want to check is the following namely that if we uh, take the variation of the function on the interval A to x, where x is varying in the interval A to B, then it is an uh, increasing function and that property is quite uh, easy to verify. So, let us just verify that. So, we have got the interval a to b and uh, here is the point x. So, we want to check that v a x of f is increasing. Okay. So, let us take a point. So, let x be less than y. So, here is the point y. So, then for any partition uh, for every partition p of a to x. If we look at p union the point y, that gives us is a partition of that is a partition. So, call it as call this as p 1 is a partition of uh, a to y. So, thus the variation over a to x of f with respect to this partition p, any partition p of a to x, we are join the point and get a partition. So, that will be equal to the variation a to x of p plus, so we can write it, it is less than or equal to plus mod f y minus f of x. Okay, because this is variation of p with respect to f, same thing plus added, but this is nothing but the variation of a to y of p 1 of f and that is less than or equal to variation a to y of f. So, every partition p of a to x, we look at the variation a to x of that, it is less than or equal to the variation a to y um, of 
x. So, we can take the supremum. So, that implies, so that will imply that variation a to x of f is less than or equal to variation a to y of f. So, the variation uh, is an increasing uh, function. Okay. We could have also looked at uh, in another way uh, by the previous property the variation over a to b uh, a to y of p is equal to variation uh, a to x of p plus variation x to y of uh, p. Right? By identity property we could have done that and now noting that this quantity is always bigger than or equal to 0. So, it is bigger than or equal to a 2 x of p. So, that is another way of proving that v a x of uh, f is uh, increasing. So, v a of uh, f sorry not p of f. Right? So, variation being additive. So, that will give us this. This is a increasing function. So, that proves uh, property 2 and let us look at the third property which says that uh, for any point x and y mod of f x minus f y is less than or equal to the variation between a to y minus the variation from a to x. So, that property also is uh, quite easy to verify. So, let us we want to. So, we have got uh, we have got the interval a to b and we have got the points x and y. So, let us look at we know that f y minus f of x is less than or equal to mod of f y minus f of x and that is uh, uh, less than or equal to v a y of f minus v uh, a x of f. So, that is uh, just now we verified that. So, this is less than or equal to. So, that says that the mod of uh, f y minus f of x is less than or equal to uh, this quantity. So, that is uh, just now we have verified that. So, that is easy to uh, verify also. Next, let us uh, look at the property that the function v a x f minus f of x is an increasing function. So, that uh, also follows uh, from uh, the inequality just now proved namely just now we proved the fact that f y minus f of x is less than or equal to v a y of f minus v a x of f. So, that says that v a y of f minus f of y is bigger than or equal to is um, this is like bigger than or equal to v a x of f minus f of x. So, that says that this function is bigger than or equal to this function as a function of x. So, this is an increasing function. So, these are the properties of the variation of the function over the interval and uh, as a uh, consequence of all these properties, uh, we get an important theorem namely that uh, the, a characterization of functions of bounded variation. We saw in the beginning that any monotone function is a function of bounded variation. And we also saw that the difference of uh, and uh, sum of two functions of bounded variation is a function of bounded variation. So, sum and differences of two monotone functions will again be function of bounded variation. And uh, there is a characterization uh, by Jordan which says the following namely that if f is a function then f is of bounded variation if and only if it is a difference of two monotonically increasing functions. So, one way of this property we have already checked because if f is a difference of two monotone functions, then each monotone function being of uh, bounded variation, the difference will be again of uh, bounded variation. So, let us uh, and the converse is also easy to prove. So, we want to prove the converse namely that if uh, f is uh, of uh, bounded variation, then it is a difference of two uh, uh, monotone functions. So, that is easy because we can define g of x to be equal to the variation of the function on the interval a to x. And just now we observed that the function v a x the variation over a to x minus f of x is a increasing function. 
So, and if we take the difference of these functions g and h that is precisely f. So, every function f can be written as a difference of two monotonically increasing functions. So, that is gives an important theorem of uh, characterization of uh, functions of bounded variation namely a function is a bounded variation if and only if it is a difference of two monotone functions. Here is a, a important theorem due to Lebesgue that every monotone function is a different function which is differentiable almost everywhere. Uh, let us uh, just recall that uh, in your courses in analysis you must have seen this fact that every monotone function uh, uh, is a function which is continuous um, everywhere except at countable number of points. Meaning that a monotone function can have discontinuities which are at the most uh, countably many and uh, you know that a countable set is a set of uh, measure uh, 0 is a null set. So, one can say uh, that elementary property about monotone functions that every monotone function is continuous almost everywhere. And uh, this is a far reaching generalization of this fact um, that not only every monotone function is a function which is continuous almost everywhere. In fact, one proves uh, that every monotone function is differentiable almost everywhere. And this uh, theorem, the proof of this theorem is quite technical. So, we will not be proving this theorem, we will assume this theorem for our discussion today. Those who are interested in looking at the proof of this can look up uh, the proof in the textbook, uh, it is given in all details there. So, the theorem says that every monotone function is a function which is differentiable almost everywhere. So, to analyze uh, uh, the properties of uh, that indefinite integral, let us define another class of functions, uh, functions which are called absolutely continuous functions. So, we say a function g is absolutely continuous if for every epsilon bigger than 0, there is a delta bigger than 0 such that whenever any finite number of collections of mutually disjoint sub intervals a i b i are given in a b such that the total length of these intervals is less than delta, then the total variation of g over the end points of these intervals. So, namely summation of g b i minus g of a i is less than epsilon. This uh, definition looks very much like uh, continuity. It says uh, or actually is uh, very much similar to absolute continuity. So, if uh, uh, if we take uh, when i is equal to 1. So, that says whenever two points x and y a and b uh, a i b i are close then it will apply uh, f of uh, g of b i minus g of a i is close. So, it is uh, a generalization of the notion of uh, uniform continuity. So, it says let us look at once again. So, it says that for any given epsilon there must exist a delta such that whenever there are disjoint intervals a i b i of total length less than delta then the variation g b i minus j a i summation 1 to n is less than epsilon. So, this property of a function is said to be uh, absolute continuity of the function. Uh, clearly, every uh, function absolutely continuous function is also uniformly continuous. Let us look at the indefinite integral of a integrable Lebesgue integrable function on a to b f x is equal to a to x f t d lambda t. We want to prove that this function is absolutely continuous. So, let us prove the fact that if f is L 1 of a b and we define capital F of x a to x f t d lambda t, then this function capital F is absolutely continuous. So, to prove this we will do it in two uh, steps. Let us first assume the case, case 1 namely f 
is bounded f is a bounded function. So, let us say mod of f of x is less than or equal to m for every x belonging to a b. And let us take a partition p of a b. So, a equal to x 0 less than x 1 less than x n equal to b. Then uh, let us observe what is f of x i minus f of x i minus 1 absolute value of this. So, that is equal to absolute value of integral a to x i f d lambda minus integral a to integral a to x i minus 1 of d lambda absolute value of this. And now, let us uh, note that this right hand side this integral a to x i minus a to x i minus 1. So, this is this is x i minus 1 and this is x i and this is b. So, integral a to x i minus the integral a to x i minus 1 is nothing but the integral over this portion. So, this we can write f of x i minus f of x i minus 1 absolute value we can write this is equal to absolute value of integral x i minus 1 to x i f d lambda. right? And now, using the fact that absolute value of the integral is less than or equal to integral of the absolute value, we can write this as integral over x i minus 1 to x i mod of f t lambda. So, for every i we have uh, this. So, that implies that summation i equal to 1 to n of f x i minus f of x i minus 1 absolute value will be less than or equal to summation i equal to 1 to n integral over x i minus 1 to x i mod f d lambda. Okay. So, uh, this is uh, for any uh, points uh, x i y i we will have uh, this property. And now, because f is uh, bounded, so we can say this is also less than or equal to mod f is less than or equal to m. So, m times sigma i equal to 1 to n mod x i minus x i minus 1. Right? So, for any set of points, we get this uh, property. So, as a consequence, so if, so let us choose delta bigger than 0 such that m times delta is less than epsilon. So, for a given epsilon, we will select delta such that this is true. Then, sigma of b i minus a i. So, if less than delta will imply that just know what we showed that i equal to 1 to n mod of f of b i minus f of a i will be less than or equal to m times summation i equal to 1 to n b i minus a i, which is less than m times delta less than epsilon. So, we will get whenever we have intervals a i b i say that sigma uh, of the length of the intervals is less than delta, the, the variation at the end points of this uh, intervals f b i minus f a i is less than epsilon. So, that will show that uh, f is absolutely continuous. So, f is absolutely continuous if small f is bounded. So, that is uh, case 1. Let us look at uh, the second uh, uh, general case. In general, when f is in L 1 of a b, we can approximate it by bounded function. So, let us define f n to be equal to, let us define uh, f n as mod of f the maximum value of uh, uh, the minimum value of mod f and 
the number n. Okay. So, whenever the graph of mod f goes uh, above uh, n, we take the value as uh, n. So, cutting the graph at the line equal to n. Then, so this is for every n bigger than or equal to 1, then each f n belongs to L 1, each f n is less than or equal to mod f and f n converges to mod f. So, these are all easy to verify because n increases. So, f n will converge to mod f. So, implies by dominated convergence theorem that integral of mod f n d lambda a to b converges to integral a to b of mod f d lambda. Not only that, we can even write this happens uh, not only over the whole of it, we can say this also in fact, uh, this is also true that integral over e of mod f n d lambda converges to integral over e of mod f d lambda for every uh, for every set e uh, Borel set uh, uh, Lebesgue measurable set inside the interval a to b. So, we will use this fact and note that each f n we have defined is a, a bounded uh, measurable function. So, using this fact we will have, so let us fix. So, for E contained in A B fix, we can find N naught such that integral of mod f over E d lambda minus integral over E of f n naught d lambda is less than epsilon. So, for a given epsilon, we can find n naught say that this is true. So, th then that is same as uh, saying that integral over E mod f minus f n naught d lambda is less than epsilon. So, now uh, let us uh, analyze the integral over E of mod f d lambda. So, that is less than or equal to we can write as integral of mod f minus f n naught d lambda over E actually equal to plus integral over E of f n naught d lambda. Right? And now, let us observe that the first integral is less than epsilon. So, it is less than epsilon plus integral over E of f n naught d lambda. And f n naught uh, is a bounded function, actually it is bounded by f n naught is bounded by the number n naught. So, that says that this is less than or equal to epsilon plus n naught times lambda of E. Okay. So, what does it mean? So, this means that if lambda, if n naught lambda of E is less than epsilon, then integral over E mod f t lambda will be less than 2 epsilon. Okay. So, this is for any set uh, E. Okay. So, now we will apply it to the our case. So, let us consider, so let us take let epsilon be given. So, select delta bigger than 0 such that lambda of that summation b i minus a i i equal to 1 to n is less than delta. Let us select delta bigger than 0. So, that this lambda naught of e. So, let us such that this is less than n naught of this is less than epsilon. So, where so what we are saying is in a sense that take the set e to be the finite disjoint union of those intervals a i b i to be less than epsilon. Then what will happen? Then whenever these uh, intervals are disjoint and their total length is less than uh, less than delta. 
So, this is less than uh, delta, then we will have that integral of mod f will be less than epsilon. So, this will give us the following fact namely, so thus for every epsilon bigger than 0, we can find delta bigger than 0 such that. So, in fact, delta bigger than 0 such that for intervals a i b i, i equal to 1 to up to n disjoint in a b, if we take e to be that set union of a i b i over i equal to 1 to n, then that will give us that says that the disjoint intervals say that for disjoint intervals if the sigma p i minus a i n naught right. So, that was n naught. So, this is n naught. So, that is equal to n naught um, uh, is less than uh, delta uh, is less than uh, epsilon that will imply. So, this is uh, less than delta. So, is that this is less than delta. Say so that uh, n naught delta is less than okay, epsilon. So, this is equal to n naught delta less than epsilon that will imply integral of mod f over E uh, d lambda is less than epsilon. And this uh, will give us for the unbounded case that uh, so if uh, so that will imply that if you look at f of b i minus f of a i summation i equal to 1 to n that we know is less than or equal to uh, summation i equal to 1 to n integral over mod f d lambda. Okay. And that is uh, nothing but, so which is nothing but integral over the set E mod f d lambda where E is the disjoint union of A i B i and that is less than epsilon. So, that will prove that uh, the function is absolutely uh, continuous. So, this will prove in both cases that the function capital F is absolutely uh, continuous. So, let us, uh, so this is an important example of uh, absolutely continuous functions that if a function f is in L 1, then f of x the indefinite integral is absolutely continuous. And every absolutely continuous function is a function of bounded variation. This is uh, another uh, obvious fact that every absolutely continuous function is a function of uh, bounded variation. So, let us uh, prove that, that if f is a b to r and f is absolutely continuous that implies f is of bounded variation. So, uh, let us, uh, so let epsilon equal to 1 be given, select delta bigger than 0 such that whenever a i b i's are disjoint uh, i equal to 1 to n disjoint in a b with sigma p i minus a i 1 to n less than delta that will imply that the variation f of b i minus f of a i i equal to 1 to n is less than 1. Okay. So, that is uh, less than 1. Now, so essentially that means that here is the interval a to b. Okay. So, whenever we have disjoint intervals in a length at the most delta, then the variation is less than 1. So, let us divide this interval. So, let us take a, so let p equal to a equal to x 1, x n equal to b, be a partition of 
of a b such that x i minus x i minus 1 the difference is less than or uh, strictly less than delta. Then by absolute continuity the variation of the variation of the function f in x i minus 1 to x i is less than epsilon, right? because wherever we take any partition of this um, any sub interval, then with the variation inside that by absolute continuity is less than uh, is less than uh, 1 epsilon equal to 1. So, that implies that the, sum, uh, the, the variation over a to b of f which is summation i equal to 1 to n variation x i minus 1 to x i of f which will be less than or equal to uh, if these intervals are n. So, that will be less than n which is finite. So, that will prove that every function which is absolutely continuous is also of bounded variation and every function of bounded variation is a difference of two monodon functions and every monodon function is differentiable almost everywhere. So, we will get that this function um, uh, f which is an indefinite integral is also uh, differentiable almost. So, uh, this is uh, the beginning of uh, uh, the fundamental theorem of uh, calculus for Lebesgue integrals. So, today we have looked at the property namely if f is an integrable function and look at the look at its indefinite integral capital F of x, then we have shown this function is uh, absolutely continuous uh, function and uh, hence it is a function of bounded variation and as a consequence of uh, bounded variation there is a difference of two uh, monodon functions and hence differentiable almost everywhere. So, this is the first uh, essentially the first part of uh, uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus saying that the indefinite integral is differentiable almost everywhere. Uh, we will continue this uh, in the next lecture and we will show in fact that not only the function indefinite integral is differentiable almost everywhere, the derivative is actually equal to the function uh, the integrand namely the function small f almost everywhere. So, that will be the first part of the fundamental theorem of calculus. Thank you.